let me ask you, as a, for an actor, it might, it might be very enriching to play a character that has a, such a deepness. And if you want, I can call him, call him a psychopath, which I think you're not. So it took a big investment, I, I, I guess, right? Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, th that this character is um, attractive because on the surface, when you first meet him, he he appears to be a psychopath. But as as the as we flush out the character and um and you start to see how he you know became the way he is because of the circumstances that he's surrounded by and the family um, that he's uh, <laughs> that he's grown up in, um, you, you know, you 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 sympathize with him. He, he he's somebody that we. Um, you know, that we care for and you see that he's loyal and that he would do anything for family. And, you know, of course he's done some horrible things, but he does them for the, for the right reasons for at least this family. Uh, sorry, Mark, if you go too forward, you cut your fa your face too much. Me? You know, yeah, the camera. Yeah. If you go too forward, we don't see your whole face there. Perfect. No, I didn't mean he was a psychopath in a bad way, but I think he, 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 he's a different kind of person. But I also think that uh, there are two morals in, in this family. One is the morals of heist and uh, a different ethic approach to life. And then the morals of the family, which is more conventional. There's love, there's respect, there's fa fa being faithful to one another to protect each other. Do you agree with me? And it, it, can you talk about those values? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it comes down to uh, the brotherhood, the the animal kingdom, the the you know this 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 code. Like there is there is nothing that Pope wouldn't do for his family, and he is um, you know he's the sin eater. He is the guy that like when when the trash has to be taken out, like that's who they lean on. Um, and I think he's comfortable in that role. Uh, you know, I don't think he's really equipped to do much else. Uh, and that's, you know, that's, that's a result of how he's been, you know, programmed. So, uh, Sean, I know there's going to be a sixth season and uh, you just finished fifth, which we're going to see now. How does the family deals with the death of Smurf, which is the matriarchal figure and she, I don't know. It's a big loss, I guess. It is. And, you know, she has been the queen of Oceanside for, you know, a number of years. And along the way, she has created some friction with the outside forces and with the police and different nefarious characters. So um, I think that dealing with her loss, it's, you know, uh, the, the walls are down and it's really going to be a question of whether or not these guys can function without her, without her leadership, because the, you know, the, the wolves are circling now. Um, these guys are exposed. So to, to answer your question, really, I mean, yes, Ellen Barkin is gone, but Smurf's present lives strongly in the, in, uh, in, in, in our, in our world, both in the present and in the past, because Layla George is, you know, we're still telling the origin stories of, uh, of how Smurf became the uh, the powerful figure that she is. So, Sean, how how enriching or how important is it for an actor to be part of a production that takes few seasons? It's not like a two-hour movie. This you create a you can go deeper and deeper into the back background, the character, explore why why he's the way he is, and then uh, I guess it's very. Uh, um, how you call it, it's very satisfying, no? I guess, if you compare this with a two hour film. Yeah, it's way more satisfying than a film. And then also, um, you know, it, the, the kind of television that we're making is not, it's not, it doesn't stand alone. You know, you kind of, you as an audience member have to invest, you know, episode to episode. So, um, and with that being said, Pope doesn't stay one thing, like he's evolving and there are so many dimensions to him. Um, so it's incredibly satisfying. What, what have you learned from Pope considering that uh, he's very different from who you are? I don't know you personally, but I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, it's, it's interesting. They're always throwing different things, both emotionally and physically. Like one season I was, uh, you know, season four, he was, you know, fighting in MMA and I'm doing a lot of like different uh, uh, extreme sports stuff that I had never done before, like, you know, riding wave runners and skateboarding. And um, so from a physical point of view, it's, you know, it's like I'm a 45 year old guy, but um, <laughs> I have to keep up with these, you know, kids in their twenties doing this stuff that, you know, is, is a lot of fun, but also, uh, you know, I got to get like one of those Theragons to massage myself every night, you know, you protect yourself and keep going. Exactly. So you've been working for a while and, uh, I, I was, did you always know, or you always wanted to be in this business, uh, storytelling through acting or directing? Or what happened in your life that brought you into this? Yeah, I, I, I am. Uh, I was a child actor, um, and yeah. I knew from a pretty young age it was something I, I, I wanted to do and wanted to explore, and that was kind of the path that, since you know I was like ten years old, that I, I've been on. Um, so you know, it's been nice to, uh, to start on the stage and do a lot of theater and then work my way into film and television and then go back to the stage and sort of experience that again. And then the next evolution has been the opportunity to direct, which I've been doing on Animal Kingdom. And so I, I, I really enjoy that. Uh, you know, it's a very collaborative art form, which is another thing I, I enjoy um, about it, sort of taking this, this, this idea and and presenting it in a very um, big way. Um, it's, it's, it's a daunting task, but it's something that, that is quite enjoyable. So uh, which has been your favorite heist within the story? I mean, there's so many, and uh, some of them very cool. <laughs> which one do you think has been the one that changed the family the most or impacted you guys, the Pope and the Cody family, or you yeah. cannot pinpoint one? There, you know, the, the, there's been a couple that have, you know, just this in, in terms of uh, just enjoying the writing of them. The, uh, the, there's a season one heist where we ripped off the, at the end, when we ripped off the, the army base, uh, Pendleton. That one, was, uh, that one was pretty cool. And then I thought the church heist, I think that was season, season two. Uh, where where Pope met Amy, um, I I, I like that one a lot. I thought it was it was an interesting way to to go in to send Pope into Bible study, and and then he meets this girl, and you know then he has to rip off the church that you know that he now in love with the girl, and I, I, I thought that was fun. And uh, yeah, there was there was a cool one. <laughs> do you do you bring Pope into your home with your family or not? No, you no, no, no. You leave it, you leave yeah. it in the set. Yeah, no, no, Pope doesn't, uh, no, I, don't, I don't have any, I'm not one of those method guys that uh, <laughs> needs to live in the, in the shoes of the character. I, I, I like to leave it at, uh, at Warner Brothers Ranch. The, uh, uh, the whole, do you think, uh, I think that families like the Cody's can exist, right? What do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, I think to a degree they do. I mean, uh, I, I, I'm glad I don't have to deal with them, <laughs> but yeah, I think they're out there. Um, you know, we've obviously taken some liberties and, and glorified a lot of crazy things, but, uh, yeah. I mean, look, this, this family is based on a real family in Australia. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what I was wondering. Do you think that, uh, uh, Pope has inherited the power and the, and the strength to keep the Cody's together. Now that mother Ellen Barking is smart is, uh, is not with us anymore. I think Pope would like to, you know, I think, but I think there are elements of when, when Smurf in that very, uh, emotional episode and, uh, season four, episode 12, when she dies, when she gets killed and she's asking Pope to kill her, you know, she says, you can't live without me. And, uh, 
And that's what we're going to find out, you know, in, in season five. Can, can, we'll see. can he function without her? 